Okay, so this is the meeting of the Hobbiston Parks Commission. Today is April 5th and we are starting at 7.42. And we will do a roll call for um, committee members who are here. Sandra Berry here. Jason Gurney here. Brian Matheson here. Dave Senecromoni here. So with the four of us being here, we do have a quorum. So um, we will start with the agenda. Um, we have no minutes tonight as they haven't been written since the last meeting. Um, so let's move right into um, the continuing the conversation that we were having at our last meeting about the trash issues down at the um, park. And Jay and I did participate in a virtual meeting with um, Big Belly Solar. And so I'm going to let Jay talk about that. Well, thanks for the heads up that I was going to be talking about that. <laughs> well, um, I, I have the numbers if you need them. Um, anyways, they, we, yeah, we did meet with them. Um, <clears throat> his name escapes me because I don't have it right in front of me. Anyways, he's a nice guy, great guy. He had a lot of information about the, um, the programs. They have a few different size um, containers uh, and they had some for recycling or some for you know compacting uh, trash. Um, and they could, uh, a variety of different services they offer along with it as far as like, you can even have Wi-Fi come out of the, um, out of the, trash barrel so people can get wi-fi signal up there if they wanted to um <clears throat> they could send uh it had all kinds of information about uh there was a was it an app there was an app or, or a website that you could go to that you could track the amount of you know like the level of trash that was in there and you could tell you when it needed to be emptied and uh it was it was a pretty pretty impressive program uh and they they offered some different options where we could buy it outright um, you know, and uh, they'd come install it for us and, you know, kind of show us how to, how to use it. And then they pretty much step out of the way, but they would be uh, uh, available for, you know, maintenance questions and parts and things as, as needed. Um, and then there was an option where you could lease it. Um, and the lease uh, <clears throat> was, I think it was a three year, they're a three year, five, eight year, five year and eight year, three, five and eight, eight I believe. Three, five and eight, yep. Yep, so, um, and those leasing options came with, uh, you know, uh, again, they'd come install it, some training, um, and then I think that came with training. The other, if we bought the unit, we'd have to buy some training. Um, but the uh, the leasing option, they would they would come and maintain it as needed. Um, these, these things have a, uh, I think it was a 10 year, battery life on them and uh, the battery life you know the battery would need to be changed at, at a certain point and you know if uh if we own it we have to buy a battery they'll tell us how to change it we can change it ourselves if they're leasing it they'll come and and do that or at least provide the battery as part of it uh, the i think the the basic cost if i remember correctly was uh i mean i don't know if you have it written down saying that i believe it was like five thousand for like, if I'm guessing right, five thousand for the purchase. 44, it was forty four hundred to purchase and one hundred and seven. Yeah, yeah. one hundred and seven dollars a month to lease for five years. The five year lease, right? Well, you, you they had a three year, a five year, or an eight year option yeah. for leasing. The five year lease was was uh, was one hundred and seven uh, or whatever, and then like I think it was right. like twenty percent more if you went for three years, and it was like ten percent less if you went for eight years. So. Um, so it, it, you know, wasn't too bad. You, you, <clears throat> the training I think was included with that, right? With the, with the, mm -hmm. with that. If you, if you buy it, you had to pay an additional fifteen hundred dollars for the training. So, um, it all sounded really good to me. I thought it was great. I, you, there would be a need, it would need to be a, have like a concrete pad put down somewhere where it would sit on. Um, it holds three fifty-gallon barrels worth of trash. So that's a lot of trash. That's like a big, you know, like one of those big cans that we have up there would, three of those would be, uh, you know, crushed down. And they had bags that they were in. It would sit inside a bin and inside a bag so that when you go up there to unload it, 
it'd have to be just, you know, placed in an area where you could probably just drive up to it, pull the bag out, throw it in, in your truck, and then bring it down to a dumpster. So I wonder how heavy that's going to be, though. I don't know if, if that's just throw in the back of your truck type of scenario. You made you know, it sound picture, like it was. The yeah. pictures that I saw, you know, like in the, 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 the video, the, I mean, the, uh, the website and whatnot, that the information he had, he was actually, um, you know, uh, did he send us that? I was getting ready to go on vacation when we met with him. He sent us the, they sent us the, uh, the presentation that he had. And I, and I sent it on to everyone. Yeah. I, well, I looked it over. Yeah. Okay. So that, that, I mean, there was pictures in there. I think of people that were, you know, emptying it and it looked like, you know, there's a person that goes around and just pulls it out and throws it in there. You know, the, like in the city of New York or wherever they'd go empty it and throw it in a, in a trash truck. Um, it didn't look like it was being lifted up and dumped into a trash truck or anything like that. Okay. But it, maybe, maybe, maybe I know there are options where you could have it, um, you know, a truck come up and clamp onto it and, and lift it and do that. You know, and, I was just wondering whether or not it's something that we would, or somebody could do versus having to pay an outside, you know, you know, um, trash company to come in and empty it. Uh, that yeah. was more where I was going with it. Than, right. You know, three yeah. three fifty gallon trash barrels to me doesn't seem like something that I can lift, but I don't know. I've never tried it. it. Just seems like a lot, even though it's it's crushed down into a small amount. But I have no idea. I've never really tried or thought about it. Yeah, no, you're right. It does sound like a lot. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it also depends on what it is. I mean, exactly. If we're talking McDonald's bags and plastic bo no bottles, care. which is mostly what we have down there. It's not like people are throwing away household trash. But yeah. Um, yeah, I just found my notes. Yeah, I guess I pretty much covered covered it all. But um, I, I think what I, my initial thought was, was that wasn't that expensive. I thought it was pretty reasonable for what we were looking for. And I thought that... Um, it, if we could, if we could find a way to get two of them, maybe put one up by the bandstand somewhere, or you know, uh, corner of the big rec, big soccer field, kind of in the bandstand area, which is kind of central, and then maybe one down between like the playground and uh, you know, maybe in front of the basketball court or something by the play, by the skate park where it's, or even if it's closer to the skate park, if we feel like that, whatever, but. I thought we could probably get by with two and um, if we can make the case for the finances of it all and, and have a plan to empty it, I think it would be a good, a good solution, but my initial thoughts anyways. What um, are you thinking of buying, we should buy it outright or we should try leasing it? Um, so the leasing, uh, when I, I looked at the overall leasing cost, like if you lease it for three years, um, at the, and at the 20% more was $128 a month, uh, comes up to like four, $4,608, which is like buying it. So if we're only going to get it, if we're only going to lease it for three years, we might as well buy it kind of in my opinion. Um, five to eight years. You know, those, those are uh, 6500 and 9200 is really what it kind of worked out to be what we would spend in the lease cost. Um, you know, uh, if we're going to buy it and pay for the, pay for the um, training, that eight-year lease really kind of makes sense. It's kind of the same thing. But at the end of it, you don't have a trash container anymore. You, you know, you got to start a new lease. So, I, I don't know. I, it's probably worth it having them, the maintenance on it, you know, and... We're not going to have anybody in town that can maintain that kind of equipment. So, um, so we'll be lucky to have someone empty it, right? <laughs> so, uh, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think we should. I guess I don't know. I mean, it, it kind of makes sense to buy it just to have it. It's cheaper, but uh, you know, uh, the maintenance of it. We're gonna, you know, if something breaks. Um, we're probably gonna have to pay them to come out and do it, you know, or, or whatever. So if we have money in the budget, let's do that. They were local. I think they were right out of like um, Waltham. Yeah. Yeah. Need them? Need them? yeah. I mean, the other the other thing with leasing it, who knows where the technology is gonna go? And you know, I mean, there might be better 
you know, options down the road. That right. Having to keep this one going, you know, past what it, 10 years or whatever. What, when was the battery good for? 10? Is that what you said? Yes. Yep. 10 years? 10 to 12 years is what you said. Yeah. Uh, oh. oh, no. So I'm sorry. The lifespan of the whole thing is 10 to 12 years. The battery life is five years. That's why it was. Um, that's why. They, that, and how much is the battery? I don't know what the cost of a battery is. Yeah, okay. I didn't. I didn't either. I didn't think that. Yeah, good question. That might be interesting information. It might be in some of the information you sent over. I, I didn't comb through it. Like I said, I was getting ready for vacation. But he, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I asked him if he if he wanted to be a part of a, me, a presentation to the. Um, you know, to the board of selectmen, he didn't have the time. Well, I guess he probably would if we asked him to, but he didn't, he hasn't really made himself available like that in the past. And I think with the information we have, we probably could uh, do it ourselves. Um, so, so I, I just had a, oh shoot, did I get rid of you guys? No, nope. right here. We're still here. Right here. Um, so I, um, so one of my thoughts were, we don't have to make the decision tonight. We um, actually, what we could do is actually apply for ARPA money and there's gonna be a new round of ARPA money coming out in July. So we could do a couple of things. We could say, well, let's hold off on the decision and see if we get the ARPA money because that's not gonna come out of our pocket. Um, but on top of that, if we wanted to start something sooner, we don't have the funding to do it um, out of our budget. So a lot would depend on how the finance committee meeting goes tomorrow night. The finance committee, I don't even know if they'll make the decision tomorrow night. Then we'll go before the board of selectmen. We're gonna, well, and we can all discuss what we wanna pitch, but I think we all have kind of the same idea. The trash is a problem. It needs to be addressed what's the best way to resolve it you know doing doing this you know hiring someone to get the trash um pick up the trash but but something needs to be done so um so are you guys comfortable with seeing if we get an increased budget i mean obviously we we kind of our hands are tied until we get more money i mean really okay. unless we wanted to wipe out the trust fund, which has about $8,000 left in it, which I'm personally uncomfortable doing, um, or seeing if we get the opera money. If we're able to get the opera money to buy two of them, then then that's not gonna be, you know, any skin off our budget. So um, so what, what are your thoughts about that? Holding off, um, you know, making a decision tonight that let's see what follows through with the finance, the board of selectmen and, and opera and go from there and, then decide. I mean, do you think that's a good way to go? Yeah, I would. I, I think we should wait until we know what our budget looks like. Okay. And <laughs> and do you think we should apply for opera money to maybe buy them outright if that money is available? I mean, we can always apply an application. They're taking applications, a second round of applications in July. <clears throat> and I think the second round of money they're expecting like seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So if we get a lease, though, we get the maintenance with the lease, we get the training with the lease, and then it's a, if in four or five years or however many years we do the lease, at least if we decide it's not working, we're not stuck with it. We, we might be better off doing the lease that way as we turn over this commission, um, the new members of this commission, if they want to do something different, then they, they can. Mm -hmm. It's a really good point instead of locking them into a permanent solution That's and then if they want to buy later on they could always buy it later on our budget wise i mean could we afford what is 128 28 a month is that what you said for three years? well i was just trying yeah. to figure that out yeah i just did i just did 20 percent more like you said but yeah so it was 128 for three year 107 for five um <clears throat> And the whole thing is, it, even though our, technically our parks close closes down in the fall, um, we would have to continue to pay this lease all year long. I didn't right. ask him about a seasonal lease, but he kind of 
let you think about that. They're not I mean, gonna you're, you're only talking about four months where it's not getting any use and maybe not even that three months where it's not getting any use. I mean, it's probably December, January, February, and then we, we start seeing traffic in, up there again in March. So, uh, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, I just did the math. It's 1536 a year. Mm-hmm. Approximately, so, yeah. For, th- for a three year lease. So it'll be, yeah, that times three. But. So, um, so with our current funding of $2,500, um, we, couldn't do that and have porta potties and by law we have to have porta potties and actually I called on the porta potties today and by law to we have to make um, we have to have a ADA compliant porta potty we have to have at least a handicapped porta potty up there so yeah. the prices of porta potties have has gone up not a lot but but a little but so. The porta potty is for the handicap porta potty. It's two fifty a month. Plus, they're doing a ten dollar fuel charge now. Oh sure. And we're going to need that for I'm going to say seven months, roughly April to November. So that's eighteen hundred dollars. So, um, and then if we rent that, I mean, we, we, we just don't really have the funding to do both at this point. But if we wanted to go ahead and kick it off, I mean, we do have the trust fund. We could use some of the money from the trust fund before we end up getting hopefully a new budget. Um, and I don't know, I don't know if the, I've never, I haven't been gone before the planning board, um, the finance committee in a long time. So I don't know if they're going to say, tomorrow night yeah you got extra funding or no you don't but i think we have a good pitch for it um yeah well and and they may have an opinion as to whether to purchase or lease as well yeah yeah Yeah, absolutely i I think everybody can agree that something needs to happen with trash you know so if, if people don't agree with this plan then we need some direction from somebody i don't know if it's finance committee or or the select board you know to you know what direction should we go then because we've we've tried a lot of different options and correct i've been unsuccessful to keep it clean up there year round yeah correct and and i do i i have to say i do think having a carry in carry out does reduce the amount of trash that's up there i really do i mean because before when we had big trash open barrels people were dumping trash like right. household trash and when we had the dumpster there would be bags of trash on it so I do think doing the carry out in carry out does help and reduce the waste that's up there. But at the same time, it still needs to be maintained. What does get tossed up there? Right. So maybe this would be an initiative for people to, you know, pick up that stuff and put it in the compactor. And we and can still thing- we can still do carry in carry out. I mean, we still ask people to do that, you know. But we we you know we have the ability for people to throw their trash away as they go out. As I mean, they go out. Yeah, exactly. I know I would agree 100%. So, uh, just want to kind of go back a minute. The uh, the the, uh, the 1536 that's for one. So, it would be like 3,000 if we a year if we were to lease two. I don't know what we're asking what we're potentially asking for in a budget increase, but we we are asking for a $5,000 budget increase. Is it, all right. Would would with, with this in mind? Well, uh, to be honest, um, we have a $2,500 budget. And in my head, when we talked about this a while back, my thinking is if we had to pay someone to maintain, like pick up trash twice a week, you know, maybe shovel off the ice rink, what have you, I did, was thinking 100 bucks a week. So I just came up with like $5,000, like 52 weeks, 100 bucks a week. $5,000 yeah. is kind of how I came up with that. I mean, obviously, it's not going to be a full time job. Um, but if you, we want to pay someone five, six hours a week to maintain the park, that's kind of what the cost is. And if you added that to our current budget, then that would bring the budget up to $7,500 a year. That makes sense. Which makes sense. I mean, that's, you know, just kind of how those, those figures came about. Um, but again, it's, you know, if, if you're not going to have a department that's willing to maintain it, then you have to pay to have someone maintain it. There's right. no other choice. So, right. um, 
And I think this is a great way to do it, honestly, because it's going to take, you know, little human involvement, except for maybe twice a month to pick up a trash barrel, you know? So, and who knows, maybe a custodian in town could do it if we can't get the other departments to, you know, want to coordinate and work with us. Um, that could be something for them. I mean, they could get a couple more hours of work every week. I'm not sure, yeah. you know, so. Is there a town custodian? There is, there is. And he only works part-time like 15 hours a week. So he cleans the offices. I think he cleans the offices twice a week, like on, you know, Thursdays and Tuesdays or something, picks up the trash and vacuums and cleans the bathrooms and that's it. Well, maybe oh. that person would be willing to do it. That's that might be a great option too. Yeah, absolutely. So um so we can um so let's just see if we agree. Do do we want to agree that we will you know, take these figures to the finance committee tomorrow night and explain why we need, we feel there's need, there was a need for an increase in the budget. And we'll use that same platform to talk to the board of selectmen, you know, as well to try to get them behind it. And, um, and then just see if we can get, you know, some, um, you know, willing partners in town that will help do this, you know, pick up the trash twice a month. Empty up the trash bags. I mean, that's how I see it. I don't see it having to be done more than twice a month if it compacts that much trash. So let's see if we have two of them. Yeah, right. So, anyone else have any other thoughts or new ideas or? Yeah, no, I think that that okay. makes sense. Brian, what were you going to say? I just said that I think that's our best option is to see where this all goes and then we can depending on what the money is we can okay. make a decision from there okay so we're all in favor of doing that then yes okay yep. Yep. um so moving forward to opening up the rec fields um I've scheduled the porta potties to be set up for April 15th which is the Friday beginning of school vacation Baseball is starting that week. Um, baseball is actually going to have a parade and, um, you know, their opening day ceremony and all like that is going to be on the 23rd. They had, so baseball, I don't know if you know, has um, collaborated with uh, Narragansett and they had to close down their signups because they had over 200 kids sign up to play baseball. Wow. So, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so they're, they're very, very excited about it. They felt bad they had to shut it down, but they're like, we can't handle more of that. You know, that, that's a lot yeah. of kids. So, um, so it looks like there'll be a lot of use down there. And um, yeah, so that's going to kick off, like I said, the week of April 23rd. Did they ever do the work on the fields that they planned on doing? Yes, they did. Right. Um, so that project was done. It, it was, it's almost 100% done. I think Part of the sodding or seeding, whatever they did, didn't take. So they had asked about being able to buy a, a little bit more material to redo this area up there. And I'm like, that, you've got that contract with CPA. So, you know, the funds are there um, for it to be used. They also did mention um, that they really need to re-roof the two dugouts. And they were saying that it's not the plywood. They really just need to re-shingle it. So I did tell, um, say to them, well, there is money in the trust fund. I mean, let us know what, what the cost is. I don't know what the cost would be to reach and go two small dugouts. It might not be that bad at all. So I told them to let us know, and then we could meet on whether we could help fund some of that for them, you know, with whatever monies we have and whenever they're going to do it. Um, so they'll get back to us with that. I wonder if that's a good ego project, too, if there's, a, if there's another scout coming up. But that's true. Yeah. True. Um, so that that's that. And then the Easter egg hunt is this weekend for anyone who wants to go do Easter eggs. Um, we provided the eggs and the candy for 2,000 eggs to be stuffed. And they're all set and ready to go. And another issue that 
Uh, well, let, let's go to the next agenda. So the signage for the field. So we did talk about that at our last meeting. And I did reach out to Dan at DFX um, and he did write back to me and he's going to do the signs. I'm hoping that we might have the signs before April 15th. And I was hoping we might all be able to get together and meet down at the field and um, do like two or three things to get things going before we technically open up the park for the season. The few things I did think we, we could do is get, we would have to get the signs up because I don't think Dan's going to put them up. So we can maybe get together and put all the signs up. The other thing I thought maybe we could do is um, move the skate park equipment. I know one of the issues is, is, you know, one or two of them have sunken into the ground, into the tar. And truly, if we can just push it six inches forward, you know, um, to get it off the dip, it's going to take a few people to do that because obviously they're heavy. But if we're all going to meet down there, maybe we can do that just to kind of move it beyond where it has sunken in, or at least take a look at it and see if there's something we can do about that. Right. <laughs> So, um, so as soon as I know when those signs will be done, I'll put something out about, you know, maybe we can meet after work one night where it's, you know, light out later now. I don't think it's going to take more than an hour to put those signs up and, and do what we need to do. So, <clears throat> um, so that's that. The other thing um, that we need to talk about, because the Parks Commission actually oversees the town common which is the, you know, you know, the town common where the Christmas tree is and all that. Mm -hmm. So the flag on the town common has broken and come down again. And apparently with these windstorms, the flag continues to get caught up in this tree and it ends up pulling it, ripping it, and it took down the pulley this time. So it hasn't been up for like two weeks. And I don't know if you know, but this is huge, big Memorial Day celebration coming up in Hubbardston because they're going to do the Vietnam Memorial um, right. thing. That's all going to be revealed. They're doing a parade with floats. Um, it's really kind of a big deal. So I'm trying to figure out, and I, you guys can just give me your opinion. Um, so I was going to write to the historical committee the church people, Bill Shea, because he's involved in this whole memorial. Vietnam, they've redone all the statues there. And um, just try to come up with a town idea of what to do about that flagpole. And my thought is, well, it's so the issue is it's so tall, we have no way of getting anyone there to re repair it. Um, and in the past, local fire departments who have taller ladders than us has done it for us very kindly, but I was told by the police chief, um, the fire chief, no, not again, they're not asking. So our hands have been kind of tied there. So my whole thought is, well, can't we just make it shorter? I mean, it's made of steel. Couldn't someone cut it like a welder? Couldn't they, couldn't they reduce the height of that and not even have to deal with pulling the whole thing out of the ground and replacing it, but just making it shorter? I don't, what are your thoughts? Do you guys know more about that than I do, I'm sure. I don't know what it's made. <clears throat> Is it steel, aluminum? I mean, it's got to be. I think it's steel. Something like that, right? But um, how much do you think we need to cut off? I, I don't really, I can't really remember how tall it was. Pretty yeah, tall. that's what I was thinking is how tall really is it? it it's like 100 feet. And that's wow. the issue we keep running into is that most of the local people only have 60 foot bucket trucks. So, um, so, and I want to say, I thought the ladder, I thought the ladder in town was 75 feet, the um, fire ladder. So they can't even reach the top of it. So I'm like, so why don't we just cut this thing down to a height where we can just repair it, repair it ourselves in town instead of being in this predicament over and over again. We just move oh. the top of the pulley down to so the height of the, the fire department can reach it. That's what I'm saying. Why not cut it so down? Instead of cutting the pole, just move the pulley down. I think the problem with that is your flag is now at half mast. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Um, that'd be my concern with that. I mean, I, I think I think we need to get somebody that knows anything about you know that stuff. You, you got to get somebody up there that can get up 75 feet that's willing to to cut off 25 feet of a metal pole right. and do something with it. I mean. 
just just doing that is i mean scary i mean do we need to replace it just replace yeah. the flagpole altogether that's pretty well, big that's what i'm asking can't imagine they're that expensive i i don't i've never shopped for one well and my other thing is so i was going to write like i said to the people i think that might be involved in it is there a historical significance to that pole oh good question you know i mean like if there is <clears throat> maybe not replacing it and reducing the height of it might be an answer for that but if there's no historical significance and no one can give us one then maybe you know as a group of people decide what's the best way to do this because the, like we can't continue repairing it and replacing it because it's just harder and harder to do it now is it I, I know that we can't get to the top of it when we need to but mm -hmm. is it truly breaking because of the tree and can we do anything about trimming the tree um or or is it is it you know an issue of the flag so big you know that it's just putting too much stress on what's up there and it's breaking so what so what i was told is that when they have to fly it at half mass that's when it gets tangled up in the trees and that's what pulled it this last time and broke the pulley so, so if, we, if we shorten the height of it and have the same size uh, flag up there we're gonna have the same issue right but you're not gonna have the same size flag so the flag the size of the flag depends on the height of the pole. So okay. the bigger the pole, the bigger the flag. Okay. So there's a company in Stowe called Planet Flag Pole that maintains services and deals with flag um, flag poles. Maybe we should just give them a call and see what they can do. Maybe they can come out and uh, if they need, if they, if they can get to the top of it, maybe they can just give us some ideas or they can just be a resource to fix it when it, when it breaks. What are they called again? Planet Flagpole. Planet Flagpole. Yeah, is it Planetflagpole.com. What is it? Planetflagpole.com. Oh. I think that makes sense. I like that. All right. They're right in Stone Mass. You want the number? 978-502- 8927. All right, so maybe what I'll do is try to give them a call tomorrow. I mean, unless someone else wants to do it, but I don't mind doing it and seeing what they say. Maybe they can come out and look at it and, you know, maybe if they can give me information by, you know, sooner rather than later, I can take it to the Board of Selectmen on Monday night. Are there <laughs> um, other groups in town that have money that we could combine with us to make something happen? I don't know, Historical Society or this Memorial Fund or? Well, the Historical you know. Commission has no money. Okay. Um, there is a Memorial Day um, parade fund, and I know a lot of money has been donated to them because of this significance with this, um, you know, um, the new Vietnam Memorial that's going up. So there could be funds that way. I mean, or it could be that it's not a tremendous amount of money and, you know, we'll see what we can come up with. Um, All right. I just didn't way. know if there was a partnership that we could... I mean, we're willing to do what we can, but we only have what we have. Well, know? no, and I understand that. And I do understand that maintaining that pole. So maintaining that, that flag is, is very important to the whole town, but they throw it on parks to resolve it. So we might say, this is how it's going to be resolved. You're going to, you're going to write the check. We don't have the money, but this company will come out and do that. So as long as maybe we've at least done the research end of it, they'll come up with money to pay for it. So, because yeah, we don't have we don't have money to to do that. So, yeah, well, that's good. Um, Jay, I would never have thought to Google who repairs light bulbs. So, yeah. All right, that makes me happy. Google has all the answers. <laughs> sure does. Um, let's see. Anything else? The only other thing. Um, Fine, as the fine, I told you about that. So the irrigation did have some issues at the end of last year. I don't even know if white turf is gonna continue. I did tell him I would reach out to him and uh, we don't need the irrigation up and running at this point. We can turn the water on for the snack shack without turning on the irrigation system. But we will have to talk to uh, white turf about if he, he will come. He doesn't get back from Florida till like the end of April. So I'll write, reach out to him in, in May about, um, getting the irrigation up and running probably 
June, mid June, usually at least before hot weather in the summertime. But I do know when he closed at, la at the end of last year, he said there were so, a few issues that needed to be resolved. So they, there were some heads that needed to be replaced and something about a zone wasn't working right or something. I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure he, he's gonna have to look at it. So, but other than that, um, anything else you wanna talk about? I will tell you, um, before we decide on, on the leasing, um, I did get the name of someone who might be willing to pick up the trash at the park um, just a few hours a week. And I can reach out to them and, or until that person, until we actually get a um, decision from the department, um, Board of Selectmen or the Finance Committee. And I mean, maybe he could actually pick up the park if even if we get the, um, compactor and he could just be putting the stuff in the compactor, you know? So right. and maybe and maybe he would clean it out every two weeks and, you know, throw the trash in the dumpster. We could maybe reach out and see if we can get that going. Does that sound good? Yeah, sounds great. Yep. All right, so I can reach out to him. So that's all I have to talk about unless anyone has anything else. Nope. Uh, nope. nope. Okay. So I'll be in touch with you as soon as we find out about the signs coming in and maybe we can pick even, you know, uh, late afternoon, um, maybe to get down there for like an hour and try to get the signs up and um, maybe move some of that equipment and um, in the skate park and go from there. Sounds good. All right. Sounds good. Thank Anyone you. Anyone want a motion to adjourn? I motion to adjourn. I'll second that. <laughs> okay. All in favor. Aye. Aye. All right. So have a good evening, Dave. Have good safe travels. And thank um, you. I'll be in touch with you.